I can bring you in cold. That's my line. The Razor Crest is one of the most beloved new ships of the Disney era in Star Wars, perhaps even the most popular hero ship since the Millennium Falcon. I was scanning through episodes of The Mandalorian the other day looking to take screenshots of a couple of background ships I wanted to build out of LEGO, but my progress was interrupted every time the Razor Crest was on screen as I just had to stop and gawk at it. Eventually, I decided why not just make a video about the crest this week and take this time to do my research instead. So here we are. I'm Joey from Radio Free Coruscant, and this is everything you need to know about the Razor Crest. I like your ship. She's classic. Razor Crest, am I right? Pre Empire? Design. The Razor Crest was an ST-70 class Razor Crest M111 assault ship designed for local military patrols. It had a narrow wedge-shaped hull and short wings tipped with massive ion drives. It had an upper deck with the cockpit, crew quarters, and access to the ventral escape pod, reactor, and astromech socket. The lower deck housed the ship's restroom and a large cargo bay with two side doors and one rear door. There was also a hatch in the floor. Despite its size, it was nearly as maneuverable as a starfighter thanks to its excellent flight control system and a set of thrust reversers on its engine cowlings that allowed it to make sudden stops and turns to get behind an opponent that would typically have the advantage over a ship this size. The engine cowlings also held downward-facing thrusters for use in takeoff and landing. The ship was highly durable, as we see Din Djarin give his quite the beating on many occasions. It was also seemingly very easy to service, as we even see him and Kuil put it back together nearly from scratch after Jawas dismantle it for parts. Din Djarin's Razor Crest was equipped with an extensive weapons locker and a portable carbon freezing chamber that took up much of the cargo hold. He also modified it by making several features be controlled from his wrist bracers, removing and covering up the astromech socket, and installing special ground security protocols. In the real world, the Razor Crest was designed by Ryan Church, who was instructed by Jon Favreau to create something inspired by the A-10 Warthog. He also drew inspiration from World War II planes, as many Star Wars ship designers do. I couldn't find any information on which planes in particular were included, but I've always felt that it had a lot of the B-25J Mitchell bomber in it. Both a digital and physical model were built, as well as a partial full-scale set. Specifications the ST-70 Razor Crest was 24.4 meters or 80 feet long, about 10 feet longer than an average semi with a trailer. It had a much greater volume though at 16.5 meters wide and 8.5 meters tall. It had a crew of one and could carry at least four passengers. It could also carry a small amount of cargo, such as three blurgs and several carbon-frozen humanoids, as well as the carbon-freezing apparatus itself. A stock Razor Crest could probably carry as much cargo as a small, light freighter, though it would only be able to carry fairly narrow items. It was armed with two Mark 3E W heavy laser cannons and could fly at speeds up to 800 kilometers per hour or 497 miles per hour. History We don't know a whole lot about the history of the ST 70. We know that it dated back to at least the Clone Wars, and that by 9 ABY it was pretty rare and considered a classic. The manufacturer is currently unknown. According to a LEGO Star Wars book, of all things, it was built by Bellsmith Consolidations Ltd. 
that this book isn't canon and is the only place that Bellsmith appears in. While I could certainly see a Mandoverse visual guide making this information canon in the future, I personally prefer the idea that it might be built by Bodajeff Shipyards instead. Bodajeff was responsible for the AA-9 freighter liner and the SS-54 assault ship, both of which had a very similar shape to the Razor Crest with a narrow hull, short wings, and large round engines. In fact, even the product names are similar. The SS-54 assault ship sounds just like the ST-70 M111 assault ship, implying to me that they are meant to be two ships in the same product line by the same company. The most famous Razor Crest assault ship was the unimaginatively named Razor Crest used by Din Djarin for bounty hunting. The name of his ship is the same as the name of the class. Din Djarin isn't the creative type. He used it for several significant missions, such as hunting for Grogu and delivering him to the client, then rescuing him and keeping him safe from other bounty hunters. On a particularly infamous mission, he used the crest to help some former colleagues break a friend out of a New Republic prison transport. While he eventually tired of their disrespect and killed or trapped them all on the ship, the mission still put the Razor Crest on the New Republic's radar. They would pursue the ship several times to attempt to capture Din for questioning, but he and the Razor Crest would escape every time. Unfortunately, one situation the Crest would not escape would be the Battle of Tython, where it would be destroyed in a single shot from Moff Gideon's cruiser. And that's everything there is to know about the ST-70 Razor Crest M111 assault ship. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this ship, and especially what you thought of it being destroyed in Season 2. As far as I know, it was a pretty unpopular plot point, so I'd be curious to see if anyone prefers the custom N1 over the Razor Crest. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. RFC, out.